Okay, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce you the uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. We call uh, JAE, JXA, so we call JAXA. And uh, another institute is the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, ISAS, we call ISAS. Uh, now I am uh, uh, Director General of ISAS and the Vice President of JAXA. Uh, so, uh, uh, ISAS is the one of the division of JAXA. So, uh, today's presentation uh, title entitles the JAXA Planetary Exploration Program. And then, so, uh, first pages show you the, uh, our space mission, uh, we call Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2. So, uh, asteroid uh, sample return mission. So uh, Hayabusa has already finished. It was launched 2003, and then explored the, one of the asteroids, Itokawa, and then came back to us, 2010. And uh, based on the achievement of Hayabusa, we are now executing the Hayabusa 2. So it was launched 2014, and uh, last year we executed the proximity operation a vicinity of one of asteroids, Ryugu. And then now, uh, Hayabusa 2 is the on the way to back to us. Uh, next month, December 2020, this next month, uh, our spacecraft Hayabusa 2 will come back to us again. And the main future of this spacecraft is the uh, very tiny spacecraft, 500 kilogram and the 600 kilogram. In the conventional technology in space exploration, uh, we need several tons of, of spacecraft, but Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2 are very tiny spacecraft. This is the reason Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2 installed the uh, high performance propulsion system ion engine. So uh, I am originated from the engineer of the space propulsion techn technology. So in the world, we have uh, several types of ion engine, Kachman ion engine, and Lean Cusp ion engine, RF ion engine, and so on. So United States are developing the uh, Lean Cusp ion engine, and the United States, NASA, apply their ion engine to, toward uh, Deep Space One and the Dawn mission for asteroid exploration program. In parallel to the US approach, uh, JAXA succeeded to develop the microwave discharge ion engine, uh, JAXA's original technology. So uh, we apply microwave discharge ion engine to Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2. So the uh, main future of the microwave discharge ion engine has a long life and the high exhaust velocity over 30 km per second, very high speed. In the result of that, so uh, ion engine reduce the consumption of the fuel and the propellant so that we can realize very tiny spacecraft has the capability to uh, execute the round, round trip mission between us and the asteroid. And then, so, uh, so Hayabusa 2 was launched 2014, and then three circulation around the sun. Uh, during that the, uh, mission, we turn on ion engine and the exhaust high, ver high velocity. We change the, the orbit. And uh, finally, 2018, Hayabusa 2 approached, executed the rendezvous with the target asteroid Ryugu. And then I can show you the uh, exact future of the asteroid. So uh, Hayabu, uh, asteroid Itokawa was observed by Hayabusa original 2005. And uh, last year, we observed the uh, asteroid Ryugu by Hayabusa 2. Asteroid Itokawa is a relatively tiny asteroid. Tip to tip length is five, uh, 500 meters, very tiny asteroid. On the other hand, asteroid Ryugu is a relatively large one in co comparison to the Itokawa. Uh, spin top shape, uh, typical diameter is one kilometer. And then, so uh, 
we executed the uh, several challenging experiment in the vicinity of the uh, asteroid Ryugu in the operation of the Hayabusa 2. So I can introduce uh, the one of the uh, typical and uh, challenging experiment that is uh, to make uh, artificial crater on its surface uh, using the impactor. Impactor is the uh, very special uh, penetrator device equipped on the Hayabusa 2. So uh, it exploded uh, by uh, chemical uh, gunpowder. And then so we, will, we accelerated the uh, uh, large barrette to, and then to, to make to collision of the barrette makes the uh, artificial crater on the surface of the asteroid Ryugu. But once we ignite uh, impactor, uh, a lot of the uh, fragment uh, scattered in the vicinity, and then once some of them collide with the, our spacecraft, it is a, a very serious situation. So that the, uh, once we release the uh, impact, uh, spacecraft takes the uh, escape maneuver to go to the another side of the asteroid in order to uh, protect uh, scattering of, of the fragment from the impact. But, but uh, if we take such kind of the operation, we cannot identify uh, what happened in, in the uh, impact operation. So that the, uh, on the way to escape uh, to the another side of the asteroid, we drop the uh, uh, deployment camera. I can explain you using the computer graphic. So now on the uh, escape maneuver, our spacecraft, and the, on the way to escape, we drop the uh, separation camera. We call the deployment camera. And so a uh, deployment camera, what is the phenomena of the impact? Uh, impact operation, such like it. And then so that the uh, next uh, movie can introduce you the exact operation of the uh, impact, full-scale experiment on the ground. So impactor is located here, and now we ignite the uh, impactor and then uh, put it with the uh, accelerated this way. So from now we have a very large noise. And then, so this operation, but uh, it is accelerated this way, and 100 meter downrange, uh, we have a sound uh, target. Just, just like it, uh, we, uh, some kind of operation is uh, executed in the vicinity of the asteroid Ryugu. So I can show you the exact formation of the uh, artificial crater. So you can see the uh, rise of the uh, a cloud of debris. Or an, uh, so that is the uh, formation of the uh, artificial crater on the surface of the uh, asteroid Ryugu. So scientists are now investigating this movie. So in order to identify the uh, status situation of the uh, uh, sound formation on the surface of the asteroid Ryugu. And then, so after the uh, evacuation of the whole of the fragment, one month later, uh, spacecraft come up, came back to the original position for the uh, just above of the uh, artificial crater. And then we observe the uh, artificial crater. I, and then we identify formation of the artificial crater. Uh, typical diameter is about 15 meter. This is the uh, artificial crater. And then, so we executed the uh, uh, material collection in the vicinity of the artificial crater. So uh, I can show you the exact touchdown operation. So now spacecraft takes the hovering, and then from now on, uh, automatical landing operation on the surface of the asteroid. And then, so uh, this movie is the, uh, 10 times faster than the exact operation. And then touch down the moment we collect the surface material, and then a spacecraft takes the automatical uh, escape the surface of the asteroid. The, uh, in this manner, we executed the uh, 
artificial crater formation and the uh, surface material collection from the asteroid Ryugu. And then now spacecraft is uh, on the way to, on the, uh, way to uh, return mission. Uh, and then, so uh, this chart show you the, uh, uh, how guide spacecraft to us vicinity. So we will take the uh, TCM. TCM means the trajectory correction maneuver. maneuver. Uh, and then uh, TCM1, TCM, uh, TCM0, TCM1, TCM2, and uh, TCM3. And then, so finally, spacecraft Hayabusa, Hayabusa original, uh, executed the uh, return uh, maneuver to go to Australia, Umera Desert. So this chart shows you the uh, Hayabusa 1 mission. It was executed in 2010. And then now, similar manner, uh, we are now guided to Hayabusa 2 uh, toward Australia. And several hours later, uh, we executed the TCM2 successfully. So Hayabusa 2 is the precise uh, orbit to come back to us. And, and TCM3 is a very important maneuver. So it means the, uh, we change the uh, uh, target uh, to, toward Earth Rim to Australia territory. So that the, uh, after the, uh, get the, uh, after the allowance by Australia government, we will take the uh, TCM3. And so uh, TCM3 of Hayabusa 2 will be executed the uh, uh, November 27th. And then finally, spacecraft uh, capsule will come back to us December 5th. And then so from now, I can show you the exact operation of Hayabusa 2 reentry, uh, executed the uh, June 13, 2010. Uh, final moment, only the reentry capsule come back to us. So diameter is a very tiny, tiny one, 40 centimeter diameter, and the total weight is 16 kilogram. And it will come back very high speed, 12 kilometers per second. And then this is an exact movie taken by uh, JAXA uh, as at the moment of 2010, June, uh, reentry operation of Hayabusa original. At this moment, uh, Hayabusa 1 has a, a serious problem. So it lose whole of the chemical propulsion system. So that we decided whole of spacecraft into at atmosphere. So that the uh, now, so bright uh, luminosity, it means the uh, spacecraft itself. So uh, high temperature condition, whole of spacecraft melted and disappear in the atmosphere. But the, in front of the uh, high luminosity, you can see the uh, stable flight object that is the reentry vehicle. And then so that the uh, reentry vehicle uh, endure high temperature environment, and then uh, 10 kilometer altitude. So uh, capsule deploy uh, parachute, and then so safety uh, landed on the surface of the uh, uh, Umera desert. And then we succeeded to retrieve uh, capsule and then after the daybreak, we went to the uh, landed po uh, point by airplane. And then so uh, we identified the exact landed capsule. And then several days later, we shipped the uh, whole of the capsule uh, from Umera, Australia Umera to direct flight, charter flight to Haneda International uh, Japanese Airport on June 18th. And then so that year we successfully uh, executed the uh, retrieval operation 2010. And then similar manner, we are now preparing the uh, uh, reentry operation of Hayabusa 2 uh, next month. So in this case, Hayabusa 2 has, is a very good health condition. And then once we separate the entry vehicle, spacecraft takes the uh, escape maneuver, and then uh, it will come back to heliocentric space again. And then, so capsule will separate it from uh, December 5th, 5 a.m. UTC, 
and then so uh, 10, 12 times before the exact landing. And then so uh, December 5th, 5 p.m. UTC, uh, capsule dive to atmosphere. And then so 10 kilometers above high altitude, uh, parachute will be deployed. And then so uh, at this time moment, uh, before that, uh, uh, airborne observation, we will identify the exact trail of the uh, entry vehicle. And then so we will identify the exact landing position by airplane observation. And then once parachute uh, will deployed, a radar system uh, will detect the uh, exact location of the uh, parachute. And then in the uh, same time, uh, capsule will emit the beacon signal. And then so we will uh, identify the uh, beacon using the antenna system, RF antenna system. And then so we, want, we will uh, lo uh, localize the exact location of the uh, uh, capsule by triangular measurement. And then uh, landed capsule uh, will be surveyed by helicopter and the drone observation and so on. So uh, soon, retrieval operation will be executed three weeks later. So that the uh, please uh, pray and uh, uh, expect the success retrieval operation, success of the retrieval op operation of Hayabusa 2, Umera Desert. So JAXA will uh, broadcast real time information through JAXA channel and uh, YouTube so that the uh, please access to these medias. And the parallel to the uh, Hayabusa and the Hayabusa 2, uh, we are now executing the uh, deep space mission, planetary Expo exploration. So uh, Bepi Colombo, this is the joint mission between ESA and JAXA. ESA is the European Space Agency. Uh, uh, Bepi Colombo uh, was developed by cooperation by ESA and JAXA. Uh, Bepi Colombo and MIO has already launched in 2018 and now on the way to Mercury. Uh, it will be arrived at the uh, Mercury 2025. And uh, Akatsuki, this is uh, JAXA's Venus probe. It was launched in 2010 and now uh, Akatsuki is uh, circulating around the uh, Venus. Uh, and then so uh, last month, Bepi Colombo executed the Venus flyby on the way to Mercury. And then at that moment, we executed the uh, joint observation campaign uh, by uh, Bepi Colombo and the Venus, uh, Venus uh, for the uh, Venus atmosphere. That is a very good opportunity for, for deep space uh, mission. And Next year, uh, we will launch the Ekureus and Omotenashi. They are the uh, 6U CubeSat. Uh, they, are, they will be launched by United States uh, Artemis 1 rocket system next year, uh, vicinity of the moon. And then now uh, we are developing the SRIM. SRIM is a small lander for investigation moon. So SRIM has the purpose of the demonstrating a high precision landing technology, pioneering landing to the uh, desired location on a gravitational body. So uh, SRIM is the under developing for, for the launch of 2022. And the next mission is uh, uh, Martian Moon's Exploration Program, MMX. So uh, it will explore Phobos. Phobos uh, is the, uh, one of the moon of the Mars. Spacecraft will be launched 2024. And then, so uh, to touch, landed on the one of the moon Phobos and the collect of the sample from the surface and then come back to us 2029 to Australia again. This is also sample return mission of JAXA's uh, future plan. And the Destiny Plus, this is also ION propel, uh, pro, propelled spacecraft to execute flyby one of the asteroid Phaeton. It will be launched in 2024. So uh, this is the uh, 
ISAS JAXA Small Body Exploration Strategy. So uh, uh, you may know, Earth was formed a long, long time ago. At the beginning of the Earth, uh, Earth was a very dry planet. After the formation of the uh, Earth, so uh, small body, such as the uh, comet and the asteroid, uh, brought water and air from the outer space to, to uh, outer space. And then so uh, us has a uh, uh, lot of the water and the air. And then so uh, as was the hypothesis, uh, asteroid and comet brought the organic material uh, which might be origin of life on Earth. So in order to elucidate such kind of the uh, hypothesis, uh, JAXA, ISAS JAXA focused on the uh, minor body, uh, asteroid and the uh, comet. And then so in order to investigate such kind of the hypothesis, uh, we are executing the uh, periodical sample return. Uh, it was executed the Hayabusa on 2010, and this year, Hayabusa 2 will come back, uh, bring back asteroid material. And 2029, MMX bring back uh, Phobos material to us. And then beyond uh, MMX, we are now planning the future sample return mission. And then, so this is the JAXA's uh, manifest uh, periodical sample return. So integrating and a lot of the uh, spacecraft, uh, we would like to elucidate uh, history of solar system uh, for 4.6 uh, billion years uh, solar, system, solar history, uh, solar system history using the uh, lot of spacecraft uh, swarming technology. So that is the uh, uh, ISAS JAXA's future plan and the uh, uh, updated present status. So uh, three weeks later, we will execute the uh, re-entry operation of Hayabusa 2. Please expect uh, our uh, mission. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is the whole of my presentation.